text me where are you guys and Jake Thompson just said he's trying but it says wrong address I'm gonna try again all you do is click the link just join in no Pam no she can come back on I'm just wondering if it might go into a different meeting room but it, it's Thanks Hi. for doing it. Jake, Jake. Hi, Jake. How are you? Jake, can you hear us? I got you. We do have a quorum at any rate. That's Phil. We're only missing Donald right now. No. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Yet. So, when yeah. you're ready, so we're recording. Well, those chairs to put your makeup on there. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at 458 right now. Okay, I can, I can go live. Jeez, I feel like I'm going to be like, long missile. <laughs> so, we're going to go live. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to go live then. All right. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Is that Donald? Sounds like it. It is. All right. Good. All right. It is five o'clock. I will call this Board of Selectmen's emergency meeting to order for March 18th, 2020. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. We hope this meeting's live stream will reach you with success and be informative. The last couple of weeks have presented some new challenges for us to respond to, and we would like to both provide you with information about what, how we have modified our services in response to COVID-19 and discuss the actions we can take as a community to support one another and minimize the opportunity for community spread. There are some ground rules tonight um, for this live stream meeting. All board members will acknowledge roll call and all votes will be by, by roll call. All in-person meeting participants will introduce themselves. This will be a discussion of the Board of Selectmen and not a dialogue of those viewing virtually. This meeting is being recorded and will be made available on the town website. Any questions asked in the text display will be answered and available as soon as possible, but not during the meeting. So at this point in time, I will call roll. We have myself, Eric Gasparini, Bill Crossman, Jake Thompson, Donald Poole, Andrew Dorr, Town Manager, and Pam Alley, excuse me. Um, if all the board members would acknowledge that they are here. 
Here. Here. Here. Present. All right. Um, Great. So at this point in time, I'd ask um, the other participants here in the room with us to introduce themselves. Um, okay. uh, Gabe McPhail, Town of Vine Haven. Jen Desmond, Clinical Director, Allen Community Medical Center, um, Public Health Officer for the Town of Vinyl Haven. Carrie McKee, Ambulance Director. Catherine Tom, EOP, helping to develop it. Vermont Kittage, Emergency Management Director, Fire Chief. And Andrew Doerr, Town Manager. Okay, um, next up is to approve the agenda. I move we approve the agenda as presented. Second. Second. All right, now I will call each individual board's board member's name. Uh, Eric Gasparini votes yay. Bill Crossman? Yes. Jake Thompson? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Donald Poole? Yes. Pam Alley? Yes. All right, the motion carries. We'll go on to now the one item on the agenda, uh, COVID-19 community response. So tonight you are going to discuss changes to town services and personnel policy, updates and changes from the state and federal agencies in response to COVID-19, um, a volunteer communication coordinator position uh, to manage a list of resources, provide community updates, and go to for volunteer requests and recommendations for the community. So first up, municipal services. Mark, would you like to talk about uh, the public safety building? Uh, so as far as what we've done in this, uh, to, prevent, help, to help prevent the spread. Um, so with the public safety building, um, like all town buildings now, it's the lot to the public. Um, we are definitely still providing emergency services to the town of Idle Haven and um, are doing everything remotely, uh, either by uh, Zoom, teleconference, telephone calls, uh, et cetera. So we're doing all burn permits by, tele by telephone. Um, so people, the sign posted, they can get using my number or the town office number, we can issue them over the phone now. Um, some of the other things we've done to limit our exposure is um, on different calls, we'll make sure we um, you know, do, it, do the call with a minimum amount of people that we need to do it safely. Um, again, a lot of our calls will be assisting EMS and all that. Carry talk about that, what is EMS is doing, but we're basically making sure we stay out of distance until we make contact with someone from EMS and then take all the appropriate uh, PPE um, actions that they require us or suggest we take. Uh, everyone's taking their temperatures every morning, monitor themselves, um, checking in uh, periodically. And that I think uh, it's pretty much what we've done so far with the public safety building that Carrie may be able to add, add something to that. So along with Mark, we're working with them to keep the building safe and closed to the public. Um, we still have our volunteer crews coming in for different meetings or in services, but we're keeping them in small numbers. Um, we're, we also have requested that all of our employees and volunteers check their temperature a couple times a day. If they come in to the station or they report going on a call, we'll check for symptoms and temperatures as per we've been ordered by Maine EMS to do that. Um, we actually went through the storm list that's in the EOC um, that we normally would call if the power were out or if there was a bad storm. We've gone through and we've added and deleted and made sure that the list was fairly thorough. And we've contacted over 100 people on the island just to let them know what resources are available, what's going on, answer some questions and check and see what kind of resources they would need in the event the power was out or they were sick, if they understand who to call, et cetera. We've modified our response a little bit. We've kind of followed the main EMS guidelines that we're putting as few people in contact with sick patients as possible. Our dispatchers are sending us codes by what they they have a series of questions. They'll, they'll ask a patient and they're giving us a code. So should we get that code, we're going to go in with full PPE on. The public should know that that's what we're gonna look like. We're gonna have masks, we're gonna have gowns. We're gonna have face shields or goggles. Um, not anything unusual. If we'd gone to a call that was suspected flu or tuberculosis, we would be wearing the same things. 
Um, we beefed up some training. Luckily, we had beefed it up in February, some training on this um, PPE equipment, and we feel comfortable that we know how to approach it. We also are looking at some schedule changes. We feel like right now we're still in the preparation mode, but when we change to a response mode, we're going to need to maybe change our call schedule a little bit to make sure that we're, we have enough teams to actually um, take on the amount of patients that we might see. Um, Andy, I'll let you handle um, code enforcement, um, licensed plumbing, plumbing inspector and assessor. Sure. Um, so with regards to the code and plumbing, a lot of, a lot of that interaction, we're asking all of that to be done over phone or email. Um, you know, Faye was able to, as that person is already available that way. And a lot of it can, can still be done. Anything that um, needs to be approved and signed it can be done in the mail, through the mail or through email. Um, any payments can be you know, still sent in by mail. Um, so just it might take instead of instead of 30 minutes or, or less, it might take up to a day maybe to make all that happen, but we can still deliver that for permits she's capable of issuing. Um, well, as the planning board meeting deadline comes closer for that first first and second week of April, we'll reassess it, you know, before then and figure out um, you know, if and how those meetings might happen or if they need to be postponed or not. For assessing services, we do have the April 1st, at this point, the April 1st deadline approaching um, for what, how properties or what's, what's on the property at that date is to be assessed. And so uh, I talked to Wes this morning, well, all the staff was in this morning, and Wes had kind of was asking about that, you know, in terms of modifying service, and that's, that's something he can do uh, property by property. Um, any changes on, you know, based on permits that were issued the year before, he usually goes and checks the progress to, for assessing purposes, but all of that can be done outside, you know, without direct, you know, customer contact. So um, we felt comfortable for now with that. Any, any contact or questions you have for the assessor, it could be done via phone and email, just like with the, with the code officer. Um, and then anything that would have to be done in person, you know, coordinate with that person to, to meet with them in a larger meeting space and still be at least six feet away from each other. Um, so we, we have to, we can make that work as well. The transfer station, we're still working through a little bit on that. We have modified a little bit. You know, we've talked about locking the door um, and minimizing the people that are coming in, um, trying to reduce, find ways to reduce the exchange of money, um, encouraging people to use the, the charge system, the account that program that we have. Um, we've also talked about should there be a need for, you know, depending on how things change as we rely on other transportation to get the waste off the island. You know, if the hauling company has a um, change in their service level, or if the ferry boat has a change in their service level, trying to scale what we're taking in at the dump accordingly. Um, so we've been talking through some of that. Um, and we have also started trying to cross train some of the public works employees. Um, I believe at least one in the past. And so just trying to, you know, should there be a need to try and continue that service, you know, you know if anyone ends up getting sick or anything like that, you know, we'd be able to still continue that. Something we should have probably had in place already. Now, at least try and keep that moving. Okay. Uh, the library, you can touch on that. So we have modified that. Um, again, that building's closed generally to the public. Scott uh, and or Linda are available to take calls or emails, requests for books or movies or audio books if folks still want to check those out um, at this time um, and making the ability to pick them up outside any book or, or periodical coming back um, comes in through the drop slot as, as it did before. Um, the only change with that is um, you know, after a day's worth or if the bin fills up, we're just pushing that aside essentially um, and not putting those books back in the circulation right away. Um, and just letting them sit for a little bit before we do that. Um, so those are some of the precautions there. Um, we talked about distance between the staff members and there, there's the ability to work upstairs or downstairs and there's room in there to separate um, staff in there to be safe. Um, town office building, um, also closed generally to the public, um, not unsimilar to what the assessor or code, if things have to be signed in person or notarized especially, um, you know, there's ways we can make that work uh, to accommodate customers that way. Otherwise, everything else we're asking to come in over phone or email as well. Most everything can be processed online or online, over the phone. Uh, there's a lot of forms and applications available online. Uh, we can continue to see what's not there and continue to put more up there. Um, the state has been considering some allowances, some relaxations to registration times. Um, 
other uh, licensing for, for boats and ATVs as well. So we're still learning about what that might provide. We don't currently offer that. In the coming days or weeks. Um, the, I'll just mention the public health team on here. It's not something that we usually see as a, a department, if you will, but um, since at least last Tuesday or Monday, I believe, we officially started meeting together. So our public health team, um, comprised of Jen, Carrie, Mark, and I, um, we've been meeting daily um, since last Tuesday. Um, sometimes multiple times a day um, to try and stay on top of this as information comes out multiple times a day. Um, you know, we're fortunate that we do have a medical center out here, so we have some more granular data available to us to see how things are changing um, locally. Um, and as things come down, changes come down from above at the state level, the federal level, as programs become available, as others change, we're just trying to do what we can to make sure the community is aware of that. Any of the recommendations and the memos that have been out, if folks have seen that on the town website, um, that's all coming out of that, out of our group. Um, so hopefully that's been helpful. Should we talk about employee policies or? Sure, yeah. So I think there's a, um, again, big changes and learning curves with all of this, different questions that have never been asked of us before. Um, it's all over the place on, the, on our listservs, other managers and other towns are doing. Um, as you might recall, um, late last week, I reached out to, to you guys uh, about uh, whether we, you know, if an employee uh, you know, has to quarantine themselves or is sick um, as a result of this, uh, to be supportive of, of that and to uh, accommodate or allow a 14-day paid admin leave during that. Um, the, the current impression and understanding, um, I think as towns start getting these questions, start, you know, trying to put these in place as other rules become more relaxed as other um, benefits become de more defined. Um, those are all things that uh, we may look at state in the policy um, just to be aware of. A work from home policy is not something that we have and if, um, something that we might want to consider. So if certain employees um, have the ability to work from home, um, either in a modified way or maybe doing a different task than what they normally might have done in the office if they can't do from home, um, you know, but there should be, there are some standards and some requirements of someone who works from home in terms of do they have um, a desk and a proper chair. And so we need to, should have a policy around that. And so um, put them together for you guys to consider. Um, paid time off, um, again, similar what you're talking about the admin pay. Um, I just think that again, that in the personnel policy currently, that's something that we should review um, in times like this, what happens after the 14 days family member gets sick, you know, the, the staff or employees should be at this point, you know, staying home. Um, so that's kind of where that comes into place. Um, if an employee is concerned about coming to work out of concern of potentially, you know, having the, you know, contract being affected by the virus, you know, that's a really whole other piece of that, you know, piece to answer the personnel policy. Um, again, each town's kind of dealing with it a little bit differently, but can put together uh, a proposal, if you will, based on what, what we're seeing elsewhere and can provide that to the next meeting. Uh, questions more specific to first responders, um, questions about workman's comp or um, you know, unemployment, you know, if, if they're, you know, if they're end up you know, being exposed to or have, you know, get the virus as a result of, of responding to something. I think there's just a lot of questions around first responders in, in general. Um, so I think that's all more information that we need to learn still, but may or may not want to address that more specifically in the personal policy as well. Okay. We're going to our state mandates and legislative changes or? Sure. Um, so the man, uh, state mandates and legislative changes, um, folks may likely have heard by now both. Um, there was a uh, LD 2167 that was implemented and signed this morning by the governor. Um, there's a few things in there that are pertinent to town, towns and schools. Um, just highlight a couple of those things um, for you. First one, um, most notably, is the ability to have this meeting with virtual participation from select board members. Um, that's been something that they've been trying to consider for a while, um, but recognizing that people may have to be 
uh, isolated or self-quarantined, um, and so they felt the legislature felt very important. A lot of towns felt this was important um, to be able to do this. Uh, a lot of the rules they put into place uh, or guidelines were, were relating to that. We mentioned early on in the meeting about calling roll, um, posting notices still. The budget piece, so town, many towns are in their town meeting time of year um, and asking questions about if we're not able to gather and as a legislative body, how do we how do we approve a town budget? And so that was one of the other things that they did in uh, allowing the current year's budget continuing the next year at this time until you're able to hold that meeting of that body. They're also in that legislation looked at licenses and registrations for different things that extended until 30 days after the public health emergency um, for motor vehicles, all terrain vehicles, watercraft, and dogs issued by the municipality. Um, and it, so it provided some relaxation to some of those particular licenses. Um, all of that, all of this will be up on the website as well after the meeting. Um, the other thing for for us to think about too is um, that they enacted was the unemployment insurance. Uh, so for folks that you know, in the community it's been a big concern about and that's something that's still being developed and I think the federal level there's a lot of talk about some sort of stimulus and whatnot. So I think just for you to be aware of the community level um, that's a big concern folks have certainly and um, that continues to change and uh, we learn more every day on that. Um, morning. Um, took a pretty firm stand on things where we kept hearing recommendations and advisories and um, effective uh, to, to, after tonight uh, groups gathering of more than 10 will be prohibited um, in any kind of public space uh, and as in addition to that the closing of dine-in facilities at all restaurants and bars um, so that's to emphasize that takeout is, and deliveries are still permitted um, but the gathering, the ability to gather in groups of 10 and more or at all in those buildings is something that she uh, prohibited as well. Okay. So we should probably discuss now um, the potential creation of a um, volunteer uh, slash communication coordinator. And, yeah, I, and so this was um, kind of a recommendation that, you know, we were realizing quickly as a team there's a lot of people that have expressed and have been helping all um, and a lot of folks are had been asking we've been hearing about well you see this person doing this one this group offering this and i think that it was started to become just people start asking well what is available and we think about the list of people we reached out to um, to be able to be kind of you know for the town to, to serve as this kind of hub for a resource you know whether it's for small business support and what what programs just become available uh, just to be able to help guide people in the right direction. Available. I think we saw that as a. Um, in addition to that, the communication, um, as you know, is really important in times like this. And so, being able to stay up on, um, we provide regular updates. Uh, we talked about trying to pick a, a certain time or by a certain time each day that we would try and communicate with the public anything new, even if there was nothing new, just to say that. But um, to try and be consistent for the community to to put out something every day so that i mean that's something that we'd be able to you know take out of, you know use as part of the community you know, development line if we want there's some money in there we had you know, earmarked some for service um, provision with this year possibly mm -hmm. um, so that hasn't been spent yet so you know there's some there's some room in there okay so would you like to make a recommendation to the board about creating how much the position will be paid or as a stipend of position or as a hourly? Um, I mean, at, at this time, I just would recommend you, you, um, you consider creating it. Um, you know, if you want to consider up, up to like $15 an hour or if you want to try and do it in house or Kind of how, how best you want to do it, I think we should create it. But in terms of setting a pay scale at this time, I don't know. Okay. Well, I mean, are we in position to do it in house right now? Do we have any employees that we between all the yeah, between the employees we do have something that we could do in house is just a change in job description to some degree and add making sure that you're comfortable if someone in house were to do it that you're comfortable with them expanding their role into this. I, I feel comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Is there something? Yeah, 
Jake? Someone that wants to do it. I mean, we can't really force someone to do it, can we? No, I mean, I've talked to Gabe as the current um, person doing community development and, and engagement right now. And um, it, a lot of the stuff is right up what she has been doing in terms of supporting businesses, being able to have that connection and having reached out to him already. So um, you know, I think she's, she's interested and willing to do that. And we'd be happy to have her you know, work with the team to help deliver some of these things as well. Okay, well, at this time I'll move um, that we create a volunteer slash communication coordinator position. Second. It's been seconded by Phil Crossman. Is there any more discussion? Or any discussion, I should say? It's more of an expansion of her current. So, you know, the yeah. position has been created. We can create a position. Is there any discussion? Could, the board? Um, I, could you just repeat, Andy? I didn't, I didn't quite hear exactly what you said about Gabe, being, uh, about it being in-house and possibly Gabe. I didn't hear most of that. Sure, so currently we have a community uh, development and engagement co uh, coordinator. Um, you know, so I think a lot of what we're talking about being able to help and assist with the community is, is right up exactly what the position um, can offer. I mean, we know that when, when we created it, and this year it's been focused a lot on committee support and the downtown master plan support. Um, but I think it's just, you know, it's a natural ability to be able to offer this piece as well for the community at this time. So um, a lot of it is just you know, kind of shifting focus to a new a different priority at this time. Is there any more, okay. discussion? any more questions or discussion? All right, I'll call for a vote. Eric Gasparini votes yay. No questions? Yes. Pam Alley? Yes. Jake? Thompson? Yes. Donald Poole? Yes. All right, the vote carries. Um, I move we appoint um, Gabe McPhail as volunteer communications coordinator. You second? Bill Crossman seconded it. Is there any more discussion from the board? Hearing none, um, Pam Alley, how do you vote? Yes. Jake Thompson? Jake? Yes. Donald Poole? Yes. Um, Eric Gasparini votes yes. Yes. And Bill Crossman, there I go, did I forget to call on you? Sorry, Bill Crossman votes yes. Okay. Um, Anything else, Sandy, that you feel like we should cover tonight? Um, yeah, Carrie had shared, um, she came in. Another thing that we've been talking a lot about, obviously we've been sharing with our memos, um, a post on Facebook last night on our town page, uh, trying to reiterate some of, you know, a lot of what's been talked about in the last couple of days. Um, you know, North Haven uh, action on Sunday night, um, as well as you know, people asking, you know, can we clarify the, you know, what your guide, you know, what your recommendations are currently for people that have traveled or currently for people who might possibly be sick. Um, so people have been looking for, you know, guidance still from us and to clarify some of those things. And I don't know, Carrie, you want to kind of go over a little bit of what the group's been talking about and help deliver that? Sure. We put something together that we'll post, but we also wanted to make sure we've had lots of questions about who should be quarantined and when should they be quarantined and how we were. Quarantine. And right now, the only there, there is no mandated quarantine unless you're tested positive for COVID-19. We, the recommendation from the CDC is to stay home for 14 days from the time you left an area spread and practice social distancing. So areas of community spread. The obvious ones a week ago were Italy, China, and Iran. Well, that has dynamically changed every day since then. So at the end of last week, we had added in anybody that had been on a plane or on a cruise and added, the CDC added that in. And today they've added, the, or over the last couple of days, they've added in any area with community spread. Well, we know that this community spread in Portland. So we pretty much said if you, our recommendation is if you think you've been in an area where there is COVID-19, you should self-quarantine. We can't make anybody self-quarantine, but that's the recommendation. And that would be to stay at home, um, obviously. Go out for a ride in your car if you want, take a walk if you want, but stay away from other people. Stay away from public areas. Social distancing, we're, we're recommending that for everyone all the time, and that would be staying within six feet away from other people. 
droplets from a sneeze can travel anywhere from six feet to 25 feet. If you're within that area and someone sneezes, you run the risk that you just contracted the disease. Or if you sneeze and you have it, you may share it. Um, how can you prevent the spread? Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Avoid touching unnecessary things, especially in public areas. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Main CDC doc says keep your hands below your waist at all as much as possible at all times. Anytime you put them up here, you're likely to touch your face. And what's on your hands gets on your face. What's on your face gets in your mouth and your nose. Um, stay home while you're sick and avoid close contact with others. The slower our community acquires the virus, the more resources we can provide. We increase the ability to provide critical care to those in need if and when the virus moves moves through the community. Moving through the community slowly lowers or lessens that curve. You'll hear everybody talking about lowering and lessening the curve. What it means is if we all get sick at the same time, there's only so many hospital beds. The people that need them might not get them. If we can get sick slower, the curve lessens. More people survive. Um, the symptoms of COVID-19 include fever, cough, difficulty breathing, and a sore throat in some patients. System symptoms usually appear between two and 14 days after exposure. There's no treatment or medicine for the illness. Should you have questions about your symptoms, call ICMS. Do not go to ICMS. They are triaging on the phone. They'll decide via phone if and where, if or where you should be seen or tested. Roughly 80% of the people with COVID-19 will present with cold-like symptoms and they will resolve. Some people may have already had it. It's cold-like symptoms. It's the other 20% and those primarily are vulnerable patients or or elderly patients, people with other um, diagnoses or pre-existing conditions. 15% uh, will have more serious symptoms and may require healthcare treatments. 5% may need hospitalization and they usually have breathing problems. So avoid public places. Many are already closed per state mandates as um, Andy talked about, including restaurants, bars, and non-necessary public facilities. Avoid gatherings of more than 10 people. Be smart, avoid the virus by also avoiding spreading it, especially to vulnerable people, the elderly are those with pre-existing conditions. Even though you're not afraid to get it, you might be giving it to somebody that might not survive it. So be cautious. Mm -hmm. so that needs to be discussed at this meeting. Um, yeah, I think there's been quite a few. We had, I had uh, offered the opportunity because we weren't going to, you know, consider the any comments or questions that came in during a live stream. But I had offered last night for folks to have had any questions or comments. You know, that might want to be brought up tonight to acknowledge that, that we are listening, we are hearing what people are saying, and so there were a few that came in um, last night throughout the day, um, and I feel it was a known one as well. Um, I don't know if you want to maybe start with that one. Sure. Um, so it's been brought to my attention, and I agree that it would be prudent of us to address our concerns to people who are coming to the island who might not otherwise be coming to the island, but rather are coming here to seek some security and let them know that uh, we are at the end of the supply chain. We're a host to an elderly population, and, uh, more elderly than usual, and are therefore susceptible and remind people, I think, who are coming here for that purpose to take the necessary precautions to um, quarantine themselves and I think maybe the best way to do that, as has been suggested, is to uh, put a notice in the ferry terminal in Rockland and to put a notice, uh, printed, pre-printed notice on the windshields of every car in line and pass it out to the passengers that are coming over there as well that would uh, caution them to be considerate of this elderly population and the fact that we're at the end of the supply chain and that's becoming more obvious every day and that they should quarantine themselves. Agreed. In that case, yes, please do that, Andy. If you would print out your letter and send it to the main state ferry service in Rockland yeah. and if they would be willing to put that on windshield as well, with, you know, when they go around to hand out line to him, check tickets and all that. I can ask them uh, certainly to comply at least as much as possible. I don't know if they'd be open to, but we can start, I'll certainly ask if they would. Uh, if they certainly have it posted over there generally in the terminal. We probably could even have it here if we could get here. Um, even on a ferry boat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
Yes. Uh, I will hope that maybe that they might also be able to hand out in the line, possibly. Uh, I'm optimistic that they will. They, they've already taken some initiative. So. Awesome. Is, is that letter something we could also send to all the property tax owners who don't reside on the island to inform them before they head up to the island? Not a bad idea. It's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, just reaching out to people generally with, you know, I know um, things on Facebook are the place that the place everyone goes to. You know, the town website's not the place everyone thinks to go to. You know, the wind coming out weekly doesn't make it a great place to do things that change daily. Um, and so, you know, there's, maybe there's some different ways we can uh, share with the community, the community as well. So I think, you know, we can even just do a, a mailing to everybody just to make sure everyone's had an opportunity to see everyone the tax roll to see you know what the recommendations have become at this point and looking to do something like that even too mm -hmm. and again we have people who, who who do live here who have come from a distance you know mm -hmm. Pam fortunately you know is self-quarantining herself tonight after returning from her trip um you know and just i think that's a you know one a good example you know, even in this meeting space for us um, we haven't traveled to make sure folks can see that we're trying what we can do to distance ourselves from each other as much as we can in this room um, but you know, i think any any time we have the opportunity to um, not divide or not put this you know this group or this group against each other but by that much i'm thinking it might be if we can send it out to every everybody on the tax roll to make sure everyone's had the same information might even might even be easier for you than going through the list and selecting which one's two and which one's one two? Yeah. You mind if I? Yeah. I just, yeah. I just. I mean, we we've, we've talked this over in months that our group, a public safety group, and you know it's hard to tell people they can't come here if they visit here or reside here or some of the people here, but just to be take an extra minute and be considerate of our what what our resources are and really think about. Um, you know, is this the best place for you to come if you're coming from New York or Boston or wherever you may be coming from that? You know, we do have a very limited medical staff, although a great one. Um, and the low, the closest hospitals everyone knows is an hour and a half off at best. So, you know, if this thing, when this thing takes off, then again, I don't, the, the more people that are here, the more people that we're going to have to care for and just ask people and people to be considerate and to think those things over, you may be a lot better off in the place you are than coming to Boston. I, I would second what Mark just said. I had a question about, is there any way we could ban like Airbnbs and short-term rental until this is over? I mean, I could see someone that owns a place coming out, but I mean, we don't need someone coming out there for two or three weeks that doesn't actually own a place. Yeah, I mean, that's something that I certainly would, would default to, you know, checking with, with the legal counsel on before recommending anything, but I certainly I can certainly look into if that's something the board thinks that, you know, would be. I mean, I don't, I, I don't recommend telling someone that's paying property taxes that they can't come out there, but I mean, I don't think they should be trying to rent their house out, you know, and someone to get away that doesn't normally come up there. valid point and I'm not sure if we can legally yeah. do it, but I mean it would be great if we if we could legally do it I would certainly be in favor of doing so so yeah Andy you would like to check in on that and if necessary we can meet in the next couple of days if the board so want so chooses to take that course of action we have a regular scheduled meeting on the 28th, I believe, which yeah, we made. It was kind of up in the air. I think the 30, 31st was the soonest we thought we might do it based okay. on travel schedules of selectmen, but with this um, change mm -hmm. in the legislation, you know, you know, with proper notice to the community, we can, you know, we can meet within a few days so okay. of notice. Okay. Are we scheduled for the 31st now, did you say? Um, you, for, for a regular business meeting, we could be. Uh, but we're not yet. We're, we're not yet. Yeah. Yeah. We have to do in the second and fourth weeks of the month, and then I think we have fifth week. So if you want to set your next meeting date before you leave, you can. If you want to. At this point in time, let's not set another meeting date. And we can 
living in the air. It would be preferable not to meet this way more than necessary. Okay. Um, I will just I think, mention just so you're, um, you know, just, I mean, obviously our, our public health team will continue to meet. Um, I don't know if Jen wants a chance to, if there's anything else she wants to add to the public health officer. Um, you know, we do, Mark and I, and I think probably talking to Carrie and presumably Jen, you know, in interested in kind of opening up our EOC, if you will, or uh, emergency operations center. Um, just for the sake of being able to, you know, there's sometimes between the four of us, we're talking about the same thing to the same people, um, but in different conversations and, and, you know, to be able to pull a few people in to be able to be more uh, efficient with our time and be able to communicate better. Um, we were thinking of trying to do that starting Monday and using some upstairs. Uh, where we have a, the ability to you know, have whiteboards and have, have a TV to put things on. Um, so I don't know, is there anything that we're kind of forgetting that you can recall as you Um. I think that's everything. I just wanted to mention, um, as far as the center goes, we have um, we do have the doors locked. That doesn't mean we're not seeing people. Um, we're trying to um, we're not seeing well visits and mm -hmm. unnecessary visits. Um, we're still seeing sick calls. We're there. We're answering the phones. Um, when it's necessary, we're doing house calls, um, especially for our elderly and chronically ill patients. So we're still trying to get out there and see people, but we really are trying to encourage people not to just show up um, to make sure they call because that's one way of limiting and tr helping to stay open and keep everybody safe. But I think that's I think that's everything, unless anybody has any other questions. I think it's important to know that um, Testing is limited, even though the media is saying that testing is available, it really is not as available as we hoped it would be. Tests are taking a long time, people are being put into queues, the CDC is still asking for the patient to be fairly symptomatic and have a reason why you're being tested, not just to have a cold and a sniffly mm -hmm. nose, do I have it, but to be significantly ill to get tested. Um, and they are doing those tests, they're doing them, going out to the car and doing them so the patient doesn't come into the medical center. Of all the tests we've done to date, they've been negative on the island. There are some pending still, but yeah. negative so far. Okay. Great. Yeah, so we do have the we do have the capability to do testing. It's not an in-house test, so it does take a little bit of time. And we've noticed from the time we did the first test, the first test only took, I think, three or four days. We're noticing that it's taking a lot longer now as people send more tests in. Um, unfortunately, there's no quick test that we could just do in-house, which would be nice, but it's still taking some time, but we are doing testing up at the medical center. Good. Okay. Anything else from anybody here? Uh, just encourage, you know, cooperation, patience, um, you know, working with, with people out here, you know, as community members and, and not trying to push people in the corners because they are self-quarantining or isolating themselves, you know, to really be supportive at this time. Um, as a business owner, you know, support the island businesses, and you know, again, just be as supportive of the as community as we can at this time. And more, we'll do our best to continue to provide updates um, in a timely manner, um, and, and just ask that folks be flexible in this time as we continue to learn um, information every day. If they're going to open an EOC, doesn't this one then have to do a proclamation work? Is that the only? No, they don't have to if they, they can always do that if it needs to be, but not just to open the EOC, they don't need to do that. Um, but we can definitely, if we need some kind of proclamation, we can do that. So. At this point in time, no. This point, we aren't. It's a state of emergency, locally right. declared state of emergency. Right. If that, you know, if it were, if that were to happen, we'll cross that bridge. We'll, we'll talk about it. Let's not do that now. Yeah, this, this is all coming like everything in this weird dream we're living in nowadays. It's um, everything's coming fast and furious as far as what our needs are. And, and today it kind of hit me that we're kind of duplicating some tasks, and I think we can be a lot more efficient and spending. The, all three, all four of us at least, are spending probably 95% of our time dealing with 
some form or fashion of this. So it makes more sense at least for us to be in one room, although obviously continuing um, on with our regular jobs the best we can as well. Um, so if we needed proclamation of a, of a declaration, excuse me, a declaration of proclamation of state of emergency locally, then we'll just have to, we'll ask it from, I think you can call the emergency manager just for that purpose. And okay. just so we're, I'll double check the uh, emergency management ordinance tomorrow as well as our older EOP just to make sure that um, we are fine by what we're saying. Mm -hmm. um, I move we adjourn. Second. Bill Crossman seconds the motion. Eric Gass, Eric Gass, when he votes yes. Bill Crossman? Yes. Pam Alley? Yes. Jake Thompson? Yes. Donald Poole? Yes. All right, this meeting has been adjourned. Thank you to everyone um, who attended in person and to everyone who logged on to watch the meeting live. Have a good evening. Thank you. We may end the uh, fifth slide now, too.